I'm Jonathan Katz Moses, and this week on Joint of the Week, we're going to be cutting the Japanese Sunrise Dovetail. Uh, this is a joint that was made popular by a guy named Theo Cook. He's got a great in depth tutorial I'll link down below. Um, this is a, a tough joint, but it utilizes a lot of the same techniques and skills you would use in cutting regular dovetails uh, that you just cut them at a compound miter. And in addition to some of Theo's teaching, I've, I've come up with some ways to make this a little bit easier and speed up the process. So let me take you through how I cut it and show you some of the tips and tricks I've learned. So here's some of the tools you're gonna need to cut this joint. Uh, I recommend three bevel gauges. You don't need them. You can do it with one and just reset your angle, but this was really helpful. I actually went out today and picked these up for $4 a piece at my local hardware store. So you can get a couple more and, and it's very, very cheap. Um, you're gonna need a ruler or dividers for marking out and then some sharp, sharp chisels, a marking knife and a marking gauge and a square are all gonna be pretty essential for doing this. So the way this joint works is you have a center point that's some distance above your board and that's an imaginary place where you're gonna use to make your angles. Uh, for me, I did three quarters of an inch. My board's about half an inch thick. And so from the center point, what I did was I, each one of these distances, they're all the same, is a quarter inch. And so from the center point, I marked out an eighth of an inch, reset my dividers to a quarter inch, and then marked out these next two dots and same thing the other way. And then you connect those lines to the center point, the imaginary center point above your board, and that's how you're gonna get your angles. And then from there, what I did was I measured those angles and marked them out on a board here. And then you can see, I labeled them all one, two, and three. This is number two, so you can tell it's 17 degrees there. And this is going to differ depending on where you put your center point. But I found it's really helpful to mark all your angles out on a scrap piece of wood with a straight edge so that you can go back and reset your bevel gauges if you need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify which board is my tails and my pins. Not that they're really that much different, but we're going to call walnut tails because it's going to have this corner removed. So I'm going to set my marking gauge depth here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark out all four sides of my tailboard. So my first step is to set my dividers here to an eighth of an inch. And you could do that by using a ruler or dividers make it a lot easier. So I'm setting that to exactly eighth of an inch and then as you can see here I've identified my center line so I'm going to put those dividers right in the center line mark out an eighth inch one way and then mark out an eighth inch the other way then what I'm going to do is take my dividers and open them up to the same distance as those two marks that I the two outside marks that I just made and that's going to help me make my marks going the other way here our next step is going to be uh, setting our bevel gauges and so you can see here here's the angles I came up with uh, prior with my imaginary center mark and I'm just going to line up all my bevel gauges with those lines and in Theo Cook's video he talks about marking out both pieces at the, in the beginning, but I think I found a way not only to make it easier, but more accurate, especially when you first get started. This is a really acute compound angle to cut. So uh, let me show you how I mark it out. So when marking out our angles, I've put a piece of tape on all my bevel gauges with these numbers uh, and what angle they correspond to. I've then set all my angles. I also labeled these one, two, and three so that you can see exactly what we're working on here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start marking these out. And as you can see in this little practice piece I made, the angle goes, it just keeps wrapping around the board. So it goes this way, this way, and then same thing down in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and mark out all those angles and uh, all the way around the board, and then we're gonna cut them. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, these little holes that we made, I'm gonna put my marking knife in it. This is my number one angle, so this is my furthest outside angle. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my marking knife, put it there, slide my bevel gauge up to it, and then just make a light line, ensuring that it's straight. And I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side as well, and then we're just gonna repeat that for all of our angles. And we'll darken them up here in a minute. So then 
once you've marked it out lightly, what I like to do, and this is going to be important later and you'll see why, is I mark it out really deeply. Just like that. And now I'm going to put it in my vise with this side facing away from me. Once you've darkened that line up, that's going to give you a mark on the top of your board to put your marking knife right in. And you just want to hold it there. You need to do the same thing. Slide your bevel gauge up. Do a light line. And that's going to allow you to deepen it. Just like that. And then we're going to go to the opposite side of the board. And again, make your light line down. And then we deepen that up. All right, now I'm gonna mark out the rest of them. So you make a little shelf all the way around your board for your saw, and that's gonna really help you make this super acute cut here. And you can see I have like a quarter of a millimeter shelf there. And you just want to do that on the waist side of all your lines. So now we're gonna use that shelf line we just created to put our saw in and make sure we're going the right way. One of the things I found that makes this a lot easier for me is I'll use a square and line it up with the line that I'm cutting in the front. So that way at least I'm cutting straight this way and I don't have to worry about angling my saw this way and this way it helps take some of the compound out of the compound miter now we're gonna by the way I just found these new Japanese saws that I absolutely love I'm gonna do a video on Japanese saws coming up but these are awesome made in Japan new company I'll leave a link down in the description so now lining up in two planes I'm gonna put my saw into that shelf we just made and I'm gonna go very slow ensuring I'm not only in this line but in that line, which will then line it up with the back. So I'm just going to go very slow. Checking that I'm in both lines there. Just take a quick peek on the back here. We're all good. we go perfectly to the line and we're going to clean that up a little bit with uh, a file and some sandpaper here in a minute just to make sure we get down exactly to our line and now we're going to go ahead and cut the rest of these Okay, so we've got everything basically cleaned up, but we want to fine tune it. And one of the things that's tough when you're cutting kind of across the grain and with the grain, this is like a crazy angle. And so when you try and run a chisel across it, it's going to want to split open. So what I've found is the easiest way to do this is I'll, is I'll rough it out with a file just very lightly. I'll get everything just dead flat. And you want to make sure it's straight and flat. So what I look for is like here I missed my shelf line a little bit. So I'm actually going to focus on the bottom here and bring it into that angle just a little bit. There we go. And now we're perfect. And then I'm going to do that everywhere. And I'm always working from my outside face. That way I am really caring about these and these faces only. Everything else is sort of an afterthought in terms of the visual part of the joint. This is, these two faces are what have to be the cleanest. So that's why I'm working from the outside. So, uh, and then after that, what I'm gonna do is take some adhesive back sandpaper and put it on something flat like this ruler or maybe the end of this file. This was a trick I learned from the Theo Cook video. I'll take it. And this is just 600 grit sandpaper, so it's super fine and just fine tune that. 
making sure everything stays flat and true. Here's where my method differs from Theo Cook's. And so what he advocates is that you mark out both boards in the beginning, but I'm not that great with a saw that I can guarantee I'm gonna be in the exact place. And so what I like to do is, and here's a practice joint I made. You can see that all of these corners on the end grain of the walnut touch the gauge line of your maple. So what that allows us to do, and it's a little bit counterintuitive, but we take our outside face and our outside face, and we face them to each other here. Then what I do is I line up those corners, and I'm using the CNC dovetail alignment board I saw on my website to get everything aligned in that plane. And then I line up my board here with my gauge line, and being very careful that it doesn't move, I just make little dots right where those are going to contact the maple. And then that's going to give me a place to put my bevel gauges like we did in the beginning and wrap those lines all the way around. So now we're going to mark out our angles like we did before with the bevel gauges. So here we go. Okay, one of the things to remember too when you're doing this is that anything that's not on the outside edges, it's never gonna show. So if you get caught up in a part and it looks like everything's gonna fit, like I look like, for me, I have some pretty good fit going on here. So I think I have a hump in the middle of some of these. So what I'm gonna do is essentially dish out the inside of these as long as I don't touch any edges. And that's gonna be just fine because it'll never be seen. Glue's gonna fill up that area. So I'm just gonna dish it out by maybe a half a millimeter or something, something very small amount. And that's gonna help me get to where I need to go. Um, Cause it's hung up like right there a little bit and in this one. So we're just gonna dish out the insides and see if that can get me a lot closer to these edges. And then we can see where we're, our final hangups are. Wow, guys, that really, it came out great. And it's not perfect, but I feel like I learned so much, especially about sawing on compound miters and how to really work on getting my sawing accurate. I mean, this is this was a tough joint. In fact, uh, to be honest, we tried to shoot this two days ago. I guess this will come out on Sunday. So uh, today's Friday. We tried to shoot this on Wednesday and it was like no chance. Um, I went through several practice pieces before I got one that was kind of acceptable. Uh, this one was pretty good too. I rounded the corners, which gave it a fanned look, um, which is something I saw on Dorian Brandt's channel. But uh, in the end, I think some of the stuff I've showed you comes from cutting this joint about six times uh, and really fine tuning the way that I get it to, to work out. Uh, just make sure when you're doing this, you really focus on all of the planes at which that piece is, whether it's a tail or a pin, um, you gotta remember that it's slanted this way and slanted that way. And so when you're, you're cleaning them up, make sure that you're removing them all in the correct angles. But I highly suggest you try this, even if it's just a practice piece, because it will teach you so much about how to saw correctly uh, and how to really, really stay in a line in three dimensions. So uh, give it a try. Let me know what else you'd like to see on Joint of the Week down in the comments. I really, I, this was a, a viewer suggestion. So I'd love to hear what joints you'd like me to do. Uh, guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in the shop and have a great day.